okay. and then just posted that video. That's completely fine. Well, we're we're recording as of now, just so oh, I don't good. forget. Okay, so, perfect. Sounds good. So I got two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Our, as students are kind of coming in, I'm just going to give some tech tips that I've learned through this. And um, it's kind of ironic that I would be sharing tech tips because I'm probably the last person that should, but, um, but I am learning a lot and you guys probably know a lot more than me, but what I have found helpful and my daughter kind of helped me through this is if you can split your screen as I present today, that can just be helpful for you to view things a little bit easier. I'll have a, a slide presentation that I will show. And so that will be up. And then if you can have your Skyward um, pulled up on the other side. And what I understand is you can just click and drag from like the corners of your screen to make it smaller so you can see um, the, the two different um, windows at once. If you aren't sure how to do that, that's okay. You can also just kind of toggle back and forth between windows and that's fine as well. Um, I go slow enough and, and um, can pause and go back if you miss something as I go through. Um, the other thing I learned is when it is on a split screen, my daughter was not able to see my whole presentation on my slides. So she could go to view options when I was sharing screen and click on 50% and that way the whole um, slide would show for her. So that might be something else that is, is helpful as we get started here. <clears throat> Couple students have not known their Skyward login and password. If that happens, just follow along for today and then um, we'll just have to talk after or you can email me or um, Mrs. Granheim in the office. I can share those, those emails at the end again um, and we'll have to get you that information. I think most students know that and, and are using those passwords for a variety of, of um, technology right now. But if you do need help with that, um, just listen, uh, follow along the best you can, and we'll try to get to that login information as soon as we can. Or you can email me. I think I can get it for you quick. Awesome. Yeah, or a couple let me teachers know. Have, or yeah, that, that'd be great, too. A couple teachers have done that, too, for past sessions, so thank you. All right. How are we doing, Mr. LeBert? Are we <clears throat> about three quarters or so? Yep. We, I, awesome. I would say let's okay. go. Let's Three, roll. Four, okay. Eight, Sounds oh. good, you guys. So I'm going to go in and share my screen here as we get started. And Sorry, you guys, just getting to the beginning here. All right, we are good. Okay, so here is just um, getting started. I just wanna make sure, is everybody seeing my presentation okay? You can go ahead and, and send to the chat if you have anything, any questions. You can, you can either personal message, send a private message to Mr. Libert, or you may send it to the whole group and then he'll field questions as we go. So I'm happy to answer those. Um, so our goal today is to enter your course request into Skyward. Uh, we are going to go through this step by step. Um, so please um, just kind of stick with me. You don't have to work ahead. I'm, I'm really going to guide you guys through this as, as we go. Um, I'm sharing my screen with you so you can view the presentation. The other thing that would be helpful to have, I, I mentioned Skyward earlier, so if you've got that up, that'd be great. Um, the other thing that could be helpful for you as we go through is to have this registration sheet available. That sheet was saved in our email that we sent out last week. There was a link to that document. If you don't have it, that is okay. It's just helpful to have if you do, um, because that sheet has every course offering that, that you have available to you as a freshman next year. 
<clears throat> the courses are listed, the numbers are listed. So it's just a nice reference, but, but I can guide you and, and help you to, to find the classes you need. Okay, so just know that it's a helpful tool if you have it. I'm gonna laugh if my son's on here already. Nope, he's not. Okay, so if you have not logged into your Skyward, here is the direction on how you can do so. There's likely more ways than just this to do that, but um, this is where I found um, the most helpful to guide students. So if you go out to our Fairmont Area Schools website, click on Menu. From there, click on Skyward Access, then Parent Student Access, and then you're gonna see that login screen that you're used to in Skyward. Okay, so that's where you're gonna to go to find Skyward if, you've, if you are not there or don't have a, a quick place to go. I'm gonna stop sharing now because I'm gonna go out and log in to um, a Skyward account so I can demonstrate what you're going to do next. So just bear with me for a moment. I'm gonna go get logged in. Takes me just a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and now I'm gonna share again. All right, so here is the screen that you are seeing when you log in to your Skyward account. <clears throat> the first step you're going to do in this process is to click on schedule. So over here, there's the home menu and schedules about a third of the way down. Go ahead and click on that. Then what's going to show up for you are the classes that you're enrolled in for this year. So that is going to be here. The next step you're going to do is over here on the right hand side under course requests, you're going to see request courses for 2020-2021. So you're going to click on that. So it says uh, request courses or re yeah, request courses for 2020, 2021. You're going to click on that. When you get here, you're going to see over on the left hand side, yours is going to look a little bit different because this student is already registered for her classes, but I just thought it's helpful to see and to follow along. What you're going to see is over on the left hand side, you can see I'm scrolling right now. <clears throat> And you're going to want to just ignore the first set of classes at the top that do not have letters next to them. Those are not going to be um, pertaining to, to your registration. But the first classes that will appear for you will be under the agriculture. Classes are going to be alphabetical by department as you scroll through these, these options. When I get into having you actually request classes, when you do that, you can either just click on the open space in the class and then click on add course in the middle of the screen here. Or you can also go down and search for the class down in the search bar. So if this stu student wanted to search for an English class, she could put in ENG, return, and then the English classes that she would have available show up. And then you're gonna click in that space and click on add course. And then they're gonna show up over on the right hand side under your courses. Now this student has completed her registration already. So you can see up at the top here, it says this student has 14 total requests. That is the goal at the end of today is that you have 14 course requests when this is all done. And the reason why is if you think about it, we have a seven period day and we have um, two semesters. So we have 14 spots to fill. And um, there was a sheet that I shared with you that looked, if you can see the little bit of my screen here, you can see this. This gave you an idea of what your schedule looks like with your required classes and then how you fill the rest of your day. So you can use that as a reference too to kind of help guide you as you're picking those 14 classes. This student has 14 credits selected. As you go through and add classes, we'll do this together, you're gonna to have anywhere from 10 credits to 14 credits when this is all done. So that is kind of what you're looking at there, but mainly it's the 14 requests that are most important. When you are all done, when we're gonna go through the slides, when we are complete, 
the last step you're going to do is up here at the top, there's a tab that says request alternates. The very end of the presentation, this is where you're going to go in to enter classes that you would want if you can't get into your first choices. I'll talk more about why that might happen later, but I just wanted you to have this visual that the numbers here, one, two, three, four, are the, are the alternates that the student would take if she can't get into her first choices. She can also use the arrows to shift her alternates in, in the order that she wants them. <clears throat> you add alternates just like you add classes. So sh a student could go over here and click on a box and that's gonna add it to your alternates. You wanna make sure you're on the right tab when you're doing that. So right now she's on the alternates tab. So what I wanna make sure you do now is go back and click on request courses again. You're gonna see those alternates disappear because we want you requesting your classes for next year. So go ahead and get back to request courses. I'm gonna stop the share and I'm gonna get back to my presentation. Okay, so I'm gonna head back to the presentation here. All right, so on this slide, this is what I just went over and demonstrated for you while I was in Skyward. <clears throat> this is how you get to request courses <clears throat> and how you add classes. I don't think I mentioned that if you do add a class and you accidentally clicked on a wrong class, all you have to do is highlight the class on the right and then hit click on remove class. So it's very easy to go back and forth and, and make adjustments if you um, accidentally hit a wrong um, but, button as you go. <clears throat> so our goals, requesting courses, requesting alternates. When we are done today, you can log out and everything will be saved. There is not an actual save button, but you will, um, the, the course request will be there. So if you wanted to share with a family member later to review those, um, you could pull those back up on your Skyward page just as you did just now. <clears throat> Here are some reminders as we go through this process together. We will start with the required classes and keep in mind that all um, courses have a course call number. If the, the class has a 100 number tied to it, that means it's first semester. If it has a 200 number tied to it, it's second semester. All year long classes have two numbers. So if you go and find a class that's a 100 number, you know you have to go find its, its match, okay? So you always have to click on two numbers for those. If the class is just a one semester class, it's going to be a 300 number. That means it might be first semester, it might be second semester. We aren't sure yet at this time. And this is a good time to mention too, what we're doing today is putting in all of your requests. What'll happen next is our administrators will look at everybody's course requests and determine what classes can we actually offer based on registration and how many sections of each class are we going to offer. Then the next big step is Mr. Gerdes and I and Mrs. Granheim take those, um, that information and build our schedule. That's when we'll start to place classes in semesters and class periods. That's why making these requests today are very, it's very important because our administration is gonna look at these requests to determine how we proceed next year based on what you want to take and also what staffing that we have available to teach those classes. So I appreciate your time and attention to this. This is, um, this is exciting for you guys and, and really the first opportunity for you to pick classes and start to um, make your own plan for, for high school. All right, moving on. So this is where you get to start your work. And, and again, please ask questions if you would like as you go. Um, you can send through the chat to Mr. Labert, as I mentioned, um, privately or with the group. And I'll also have time at the end where you can unmute your mic at the end and ask questions that way too. So the first class you're gonna to enter today is under English. So you can scroll or search ENG 121 and ENG 221. So one at a time, so you'll, you'll find ENG 121, kind of click in that, that open area and then click add course. Same with second semester, click on ENG 
221 and then click on add course. You now are going to have a running total of course requests over on the right hand side of your screen. So you should have two course requests and two credits that are totaled. The next set of required classes are under the math category. So <clears throat> every student is going to select at one option from, from these three options listed here. And each of these options has two numbers because it's a year long class. So if you are currently in pre-algebra, you are going to register for algebra next year. That number numbers are MAT 112, and MAT 212. So again, currently in pre-algebra, you're registering for algebra. Many of you are in algebra at this time as an eighth grader. If so, you're gonna register for geometry. Those two numbers are MAT 123 and MAT 223. There is a group of you that are in geometry as eighth graders, you are gonna move on into advanced algebra. Those numbers are MAT 132 and MAT 232. When you're done with math, all students should have four course requests that are listed at the top of your page. So four course requests. I'll keep on moving, but please, if I'm going too fast or you need me to go back, um, please, please let me know. The next required class is under PE. You can search for PEH 322, and there you're going to find PE 9. So select that and add course. Just one number because it's just a semester class. Now you're gonna go to science, that's also on this slide, and search SCI 122 and SCI 222. All students will take full year of physical science. When you're searching, you're, you're maybe gonna see a science 123 number and 223. Do not select those. We want you to pick the 122 and 222 numbers. So just, um, Pay attention to that. Um, there is another option listed, but we want you to select these two numbers. <clears throat> I'll pause just a second. So when you add these courses, you should be at seven course requests. Okay. The very last required that everybody will take is under social studies, SOC 322. That is civics. So searching under social studies, SOC 322, and that is one semester. So you will have one semester of social studies next year. So that'll be different than what you're used to. So now everybody should have eight course requests. So if you think about it on our seven period day, you have four spots filled essentially each semester. So if you think that one through four is filled, you now have five, six, seven left to fill in. And that's where we will go next is starting to fill in those classes that you want to take. So you, you've probably been thinking about this over the last week and maybe have a tentative plan. And this is now when you're going to enter those classes. So now I'm going to share additional um, elective classes and eventually I will get to study hall. So if you know you want to study hall, just kind of hold on and, and I will get to that slide as well. So I still keep this slide under required classes. And that is because before you graduate, so you're going to have four years to meet this requirement. But before you graduate, you need to take one um, career and technical education class. There are many ways that you can meet this requirement to graduate. 
One of them is by taking computer applications and careers. That is under the business category, BUS 320. Computer apps is learning a lot about different computer applications like Microsoft Word and Excel, and um, they, they tie a lot of it to career applications as well. If you're thinking you wanna take additional business classes, this can be a helpful class too because it can serve as a prerequisite, a course that you need to take before you take more advanced classes in business. That's just one of the ways to meet that CTE requirement. So if you intend to take that next year, you can go ahead and find that class and add it. If you're not thinking that's how you're gonna meet that course requirement or don't wanna do that next year, you will have other opportunities to take an agriculture class, a business class, a career and technical education class, and a facts class. Any one class in all of those categories would meet that requirement. And I'll, I'll get to those electives here in, in a minute. Another area, oops, go back. Another area that is still under required classes, but not necessarily everybody's gonna do this next year. Many of you will, but not everyone. So I still have it under required because before you graduate, all students to earn a Fairmont High School diploma will earn one full year of music or one full year of art. I put the music numbers on here because they get a little confusing. Um, so I wanted to make sure I go through each one of these separately. <clears throat> so if you intend to take music next year, you've maybe been in music and plan to continue, or you've thought, you know, I'd like to join choir, I haven't been in it before, the numbers are here. The first set of numbers apply to students that are both band and orchestra students. So this is a, a small group of students, but we do have them every year that wanna do both band and orchestra. You're gonna enter all four of those numbers. So it's music 138 and 238, and music 140 and 240. You are gonna be the one group of students that ends up with 16 course requests. Instead of 14, you're gonna have 16, but Band and orchestra are the same hour every day, so it's not going to take up another spot on your schedule. Students can go back and forth between band and orchestra. They work with their instructors to do that. So that is um, how you will register if you are band and orchestra. If you are playing, and then my, my next set of numbers, just know that band and choir are not the same hour next year. So that's new for you guys too and orchestra and choir are not the same hour. So you no longer can do band, orchestra, and choir all during fifth hour. Choir is separate from the other musics. So here's where you're going to enter in if these apply to you. If you plan to do band next year, just band um, and not orchestra, you will register for music 139 and music 239. If you plan to do orchestra and not band, you will do music 137 and music 237. Notice that all of these courses are year long, so that's why you have the two different numbers to sign up for. <clears throat> if you are a boy and planning to do choir, your selection is going to be concert choir next year. You would then register for music 131 and music 231. For the girls in our group that are going to be in choir next year, your choir is called Bella Voce. It's a girls only choir and that the numbers for that class are music 161 and music 261. So if you are a student that filled in your eight required classes and have scheduled for band or orchestra and choir, you have now filled 12 spots on your schedule out of 14. So just keep that in mind as you're going through this and as you're looking at those number of requests that are filling up that um, 14 is the max that you can schedule unless you are that band and orchestra and then you're gonna have 16. I do not have the art numbers on here, but just wanted to let you know that if your music is not your thing, and you're planning to meet this requirement by taking art, before you graduate, you just need two art classes. The ones that are available next year to you as a, as a freshman would be the art one 
art two, interior design, and ceramics. Those are the four options. And this is where it's important to note that some classes do have what's called prerequisites before you can take the next class. For instance, you have to take art one before you can take art two. In fact, in the course options handbook, if you referred to that um, during this last week, there's a list of all the classes we have on the registration sheets for next year. And those um, courses are listed along with a description and the prerequisites and grade levels are listed. So I think to take art two, the um, information says you have to pass art one with a C or higher. So just know that those are things that you wanna pay attention to as you're deciding what you're going to take. You wanna make sure that you are signing up for the right classes. Same with like culinary arts. You need to have culinary arts one before you take two. So just keep that in mind as you look at those. You can find those prerequisites again in our course options and that link was on that um, document that we sent out to you a week ago. And I can help answer questions if you have questions on prerequisites. <clears throat> Okay, so this slide is where I really let you do a little bit of work here to fill in your course requests. Because again, not everybody's schedule is gonna look the same and, and we wouldn't want it to. We want you to make very thoughtful decisions about what you wanna take. So you're gonna work to get those requests to 14. On here I did highlight Spanish um, and I put that there because I often get questions about Spanish when I'm presenting in the classroom. So I just wanted to make sure I addressed this. Spanish is an option at Fairmont High School. We have four, four years of Spanish that students can take. We do not require Spanish for our graduation policy, okay? So it's not a requirement for us. But if students are thinking, and I know you are young yet and you have a lot of time ahead of you to make these um, important decisions about your future, but there are a lot of four-year colleges that recommend it and some that require taking two years of a foreign language. Now, not all do. Um, some, if you meet all their other requirements, don't require the a foreign language, but there are some that do. So if you're still in that unknown kind of category of where you're gonna go and what you're gonna do, it may be a good idea to consider taking a foreign language and taking two years of that. Now, uh, most students that are considering taking Spanish do start taking it in ninth grade, but that doesn't mean that you have to. I've had students also that just couldn't fit it in. They had other things they really wanted to take first, and they waited to take it maybe their 10th grade year or 11th grade year. Just know if you do that, you're probably going to be with a lot of freshmen when you take that later on which is completely okay, but I just want you to have that information as you're making those thoughtful decisions. So again, Spanish not required, but if you're thinking for your college, uh, it might be something to consider to take those two years. You're young yet, but you know, a, a way you can even research that is to search the colleges that you might even be thinking are on your bucket list and, and looking at those and looking at their admission requirements to see what they say about foreign language. That can help guide you as well. And Mr. Gertis and I can help, help connect you to that. Other options also on your registration sheet, and also you can just simply scroll through all the options. Uh, another foreign language option would be Latino studies. So that would be an option for ninth grade. That's just a one semester class. There are six business options on your schedule. And so you can look at those anywhere from personal finance to accounting, sports marketing, web design, entrepreneurship. So some options there that you've had some time to look at. Career and tech ed, that would be like the welding, the small engines, the autos, woodworking, uh, mechatronics. There's lots of options there for a semester class. Under the facts category, there are five options. There's the child development, there's a textiles and clothing, culinary arts or cooking, there is a computer science option. This is new this year and that we have a one semester computer science option for students that want to explore that area more and decide if they'd want to take like a year long computer science class down the road. The last elective under other elective is principles of flight. This has been another uh, area where many students have had some questions for me. That is a year long class. It's very new to our building. Mr. Brooks is our instructor for that. I think it has a minimum or a maximum of like 15 to 20 students that we can put in there. And so if that is an interest, it is a year long commitment. Um, 
the other thing I just want to let ninth graders know is that if we have a lot of students register for that, juniors and seniors would get priority to be in that class. So you might find yourself in a position where um, we have to look to your alternates that, that you would take if you can't get into your first choice to fill that if we end up having to remove some of our younger students from that class. But definitely sign up for that as an option if that's something you're interested in. <clears throat> so as I shared, I get to study halls. I present all of these really you know, awesome um, options, but um, study halls are definitely a, a, on the table and an okay option as well. This is where you have to think about this year and how did your academic year go for you? I know we are in an um, unprecedented time right now, but thinking kind of back to first semester and even that third quarter, was a study hall something that you had and was helpful for you? Did you use it wisely? If so, you may want to consider then registering for a study hall. Did you have one and you didn't really use it? If you, if you feel like that's not something you need, maybe you want to fill your schedule without a study hall. Some of you have a certain semester where you're busier. If you know your spring semester is really busy, you're in maybe an activity or a couple activities, and you could use that time during the school day to work on homework during that second semester. You can just sign up for a, for a second semester study hall. The numbers are here. There's SH3000 for first semester and SH4000 for second semester. Say, so Mrs. Schwieger? Yes. Um, I have a request for welding. Yes. So do you know the number for welding or how do they find welding? Yep, it's under CTE and it is CTE 318. Okay, thank you. You bet, yes. <clears throat> when you're filling in study halls, make sure you're grabbing the SH3000 and SH4000 and not SPE300 and SPE400. Um, sometimes students get mixed up as they're looking because they just see study hall, but try to grab the right number of SH3000 and SH4000. <clears throat> and I think I told you at the beginning, I just want to reassure you again, Mr. Gertis and I will be checking course requests. You guys are my last um, presentation through this week, and I imagine we'll have like a makeup session next week for those that are absent. But when we're done with this, we'll go through and check everybody to just ensure that they have the required classes that the, they need and that they have the right number of requests in their schedule. <clears throat> The very last step that I mentioned earlier is where you're gonna go in and click on that Request Alternates tab. So once you have all 14 requests entered from all of those options that we talked about, you're gonna click on that Request Alternates tab. There is when you're gonna select your courses just like you did when you selected your classes that you want to take. You're gonna do the same for your alternates. You can scroll, look for those classes, and click on add class. And that's where those classes are gonna show up in order, one, two, three, four, and you can use those arrows to move them in the order that you would like. So when you have completed 14 requests, 16 for those of you in band and orchestra, 14 chorus requests and four alternates, <clears throat> you can then log out and your task is done for today. You've got everything taken care of and, um, First time that you've been through this. So you guys, I appreciate your attention and, and working through this. This It's not an easy task from, from home. So we are doing our, our best to guide you and help you through. I also have been receiving quite a few emails uh, from students. So that is a, another great way to um, reach out to us. I'm gonna just stop my share right now so I can see you all. Um, if you want to email Mr. Gertis or myself, our email addresses were included in that document we sent you a week ago. You can also find us out on the um, page where you can see all, all the staff and all the email addresses in our Google Sites. We're, we're also located there. You can send it through our Google Apps, so then you can search and find us pretty easily. Um, keep in mind that uh, Mr. Gertis and I split the alphabet, so if your last name is A through L, Typically, you would um, go through Mr. Gertis and M through Z through me, but please know if you send a question our way, um, we, we will do our best to answer. So, um, you know, if they end up coming my way or Mr. Gertis, we'll, we'll do our best to, to field those questions. And I have had quite a few from eighth graders. 
I've been in presentations quite a bit, but I am still trying to get to your emails within a day or so um, to, to help guide you. So I'm going to open up to questions. You guys have been a great group. I haven't had a lot of questions yet, um, but again, please know that this is a great time to do so. If you feel like you're done with your task and things went well and you're ready to log out, that's okay too. You can go ahead and, and um, log out um, from Skyward and from this meeting. I guess the last thing I would say is try not to make many um, or if any adjustments to what you did today. <clears throat> I've shared with other groups, we really tried to guide you to get the required classes. But if you leave here today and change your mind on an elective, that's okay. You can take an elective out, just make sure you replace it so you have those 14 course requests. And I think that this window will be open through the rest of today for students to make adjustments. And then I think it'll close. So if they don't have questions, they can yeah. hop out of the meeting? They sure can, yep. I really appreciate you guys taking time to do this today. I, I'm happy to talk with you individually if you have any additional questions. I see a, a question, how do I save it? Good question. Um, it will just save. So when you log out of Skyward, those requests are not going anywhere. So if you even wanted to just log out and you can go log back in just to reassure yourself that they're there, but, but they do automatically save. Looks like one by one, they're heading out for the day. Down to just.